Hey everyone! So for today's video I wanted to do a quick tutorial on something that I guess when I was first starting out seemed a little elusive. First of all, I would really recommend getting a reference because it's always better to paint from a reference if it's your first time doing something. Um, even if it's your second or third, once you've done it a couple of times, then yeah, you can probably do it without a reference. But always best to start with a reference. So I've got a reference of Emma Watson's face that I've been using for this whole painting and I've got that pulled up beside me. The first things first with freckles is, and I see a lot of people do this when they're first beginning, is they make them really dark or like black. Definitely do not do that. Freckles are not black. They are generally just like a few shades darker than the skin tone you've already got. So I over here have mixed, I know my palette is a huge mess, but that's the way I roll. So over here I've mixed a skin tone, that right there, and down here I've got some, um, I think this is burnt umber, and I'm just going to kind of take that burnt umber and mix it up here with the skin tone I already have. So I've got a nice shade for my freckles. And this may or may not be a good shade, actually. I'm gonna add a little bit. This right here is raw sienna. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that just to kind of warm it up. Because when I'm looking at the pictures of her freckles, they're a little on the warm side, just a little bit darker than her actual skin tone. She's got very fair skin, so we wanna keep her freckles fairly fair, fairly fair, yeah, that's a fun one. All right, so the next step with doing freckles is you do not want them to look robotic. And what I mean by that is, actually it would be great if you just went and looked up some bad freckle tattoos. Uh, it's really hard to let them happen kind of naturally. So what I'm gonna do, is do a test freckle here. You don't want you want to make sure that they're different sizes. You don't want them all to be the same size and you want them to be speckled. And when I say speckled, I mean you do not want them all to be like the same distance apart. So if I did this, all of a sudden you see like these this triangle. We don't want that. So we want to make sure that they're more of like a natural looking kind of speckled thing. Some of them are closer together, some are farther apart, some are bigger, some are smaller. And we're just kind of dotting them in really lightly. I do not have a lot of paint on my brush because there is one thing you can always do, which is add more paint. But once it's on there, it's always harder to take it off. So you risk, when you do that, you are risking um, not being able to take it off and having to paint over it, which is not something anyone likes to do. And you don't want them to be perfect circles either. Freckles are kind of, you know, oddly shaped. They're not necessarily perfect circles. So some of them are a little oblong. Some of them might be perfect dots. Some of them might actually be two freckles that have actually grown into each other and connected. So there's, you know, you just kind of want to try to make it look as natural as possible. And the way to do that is to turn off your type A brain and just go a little wild. And because she's already dry underneath, or mostly dry, I can kind of go in and blot out certain freckles if it looks too harsh or if I end up seeing like there's too much of a pattern like this looked like there was freckle 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 and that just did not look good so I went in and just kind of dabbed that freckle out um, so that's definitely a plus for working on it where the base is already dry especially if you're starting out you're you'll definitely want to have lots of dry periods so that you have room to make errors, you know, so you want to be smart about this until you get confident that you know what you're doing, you've done something a couple of times, and it's not going to be a mistake that you make that's going to 
make you hate your painting and you'll have to start over or you have to wait for it to dry and then you know paint over your mistakes so let's avoid that by having lots of dry periods between it in the beginning once you get to a point where you're really confident with how your hand works how the brush works how the paint intermingles um, because a lot of times you can actually end up over blending and when, when you're like doing it together but if you've already got it kind of dry that's too much it's not but if you've already got it dry underneath it's easier to kind of like things don't blend together so you can have harsher edges if you want them but you can also go in and blend them if you need to Alright you guys, so now that I've got them down, before they dry, and because I'm painting on raw wood, things do tend to dry a little faster than they would normally. Um, the wood kind of really absorbs some of that. I'm going to take a dry brush, a soft dry brush, and just kind of blend out some of those freckles. And by doing this, it makes them less harsh. It, it, pushes them back and into the skin so they look more natural rather than like they're sitting on top of her face. And blending with a dry brush is an art in and of itself. Um, you want to make sure you're pulling and pushing in the angles that make sense for the way you want something to blend. Now because I'm just kind of blending this all over, I can just kind of do like these all over blends. And because I used a light amount in my freckles, it's not smearing. If I had used heavier amounts of paint or more diluted paint, it would smear a lot. So this is painting on raw wood. And because it's the raw wood, I know I said this before, I want to reiterate that the wood is absorbing a lot of the oil paint really fast. So what ends up left is kind of this like, almost the chalky pigment that's within the paint. And it starts kind of behaving more like oil pastels where it's more dry. Now I've got a much more subtle freckle going on. And once you've done this, you can go in and add more layers of freckles. And you can keep doing this until you're happy. Um, another thing that you might want to consider is in the shadows, the freckles might appear darker. So I can go in with another layer. I can actually if I bring you all over here. I can take my freckle color here, take a little bit more of this burnt umber, pull it in there, and make a kind of a darker version of that same freckle color so that it's in the same family. We can go back over to Emma Watson and we can either pick some to make a little darker or add new ones. That'll be just a tad darker. doing is going back with a highlight on the skin a very soft brush and this color the skin color I have up here is actually very very light in comparison I can kind of go in and just brush in some more highlights that'll kind of go, sit on top of the freckles And I haven't diluted this paint at all. It's just a little bit of that super light skin tone. And I'm blending it with my finger because because this absorbs so fast, a little finger blend 
it's the I feel like is the way to go. And then maybe a little bit right here on her cheekbone. bone. And this just helps um, as you're like layering the the paint so that it kind of pushes the freckles farther back at, in the layering. So you've got freckles here and then a little bit of the lightest skin tone on top of it so that it just looks more natural. It makes it not look less like the, the freckles were an afterthought. Um, so that it's just part of making it more realistic. And maybe a little bit more right here on her chinny chin. Just kind of, you know, slowly building up the highlights where the highlights belong. And it's adding that extra layer of dimension in her face. A little more light. Um, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it for painting freckles. I know it can be daunting and it definitely takes practice, but it's once you get it down, it's not so difficult. But let's just kind of go over those things I covered real quick. One, do not use pure black. Two, you absolutely want to make them look natural. Do not be, let your human need for making patterns come out. You do not want to make a pattern. You want it to look spontaneous and speckled like the way an egg is speckled. You know, it's not perfectly laid out. They just kind of pop up where they want. And then you want to blend it so that they have softer edges and look natural on the skin. And then maybe put your highlight layer on top. So, Alright guys, um, I'm going to be having the full time lapse of this painting up very very soon. This painting of Hermione is almost complete and it will be going up in the Harry Potter show at Zapau Gallery in Asheville, North Carolina, which I believe it opens May 24th. There's going to be a lot of great artists there for the group show and um, of course I will also be there. So. And I'm actually going to try to physically show up at this show and not just send my stuff. So it'd be really great to meet some of you if you're in the Asheville area. And yeah guys, happy Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. Love you.